Chinese votive sword near Atlanta, Georgia. When ancient artifacts make their way across continents, their discovery can occasionally suggest cross-cultural exchanges that far predate those previously known to historians and anthropologists. Several such out-of-place artifacts, found far from their origins, appear to have originated in ancient China. In July 2014, north of Atlanta, Georgia, a jade sword was discovered, partially exposed by a small stream and obscured by roots, jutting out of the earth about two meters below the bank. Its hiding place had apparently been eroded away, thus disturbing the artifact, which seemed to have remained untouched for many years, perhaps even millennia. The jade votive sword measures almost 30 centimeters in length and 6 centimeters in width at the handle, weighing nearly half a kilogram. It became immediately apparent, partly due to the intricate carvings and motifs, that American hands did not craft this artifact. In line with other ancient Chinese swords, its blade is weighted at the tip for a stronger, more devastating swing. It's also adorned with images consistent with Chinese culture, including a silkworm, a dragon, and a feather crown. Initial investigations determined the sword to be made from the mineral lizardite, and it was likely a one-of-a-kind production. Surface features indicate that it's extremely old, and a small section is made from an unidentified material. The votive sword has not yet been accurately dated. However, according to the initial paper published on its discovery, quote, the dragon and silkworm motif would date the sword to the Chin Chu period, making it thousands of years old. The presence of the Chinese votive sword in Georgia further supports theories of pre-Columbian contact with the Americas and suggests that wide-reaching intercontinental trade may have occurred much earlier than previously thought. It is hoped that further investigative analyses will indicate the origin of the lizardite, but it is likely that we will never know the whole story behind how this unique artifact came to be embedded in a bank of mud so far from its home. Sabu Disk One of the world's oldest out-of-place artifacts is the Sabu Disk, believed to originate from ancient Egypt's first dynasty, around 3000 BC. Named after the high-ranking general Sabu, in whose grave it was found, Walter Emery, an archaeologist, discovered the Sabu Disk in the Saqqara Necropolis in January 1936. It quickly gained the attention of leading Egyptologists worldwide. The tomb comprised seven chambers, including a central burial chamber where Sabu's skeleton was discovered. The disc was found in pieces beside him, but has since been restored. The artifact resembles something from science fiction, with a deformed bowl shape featuring three lobes and a central socket hole. Made from a type of rock known as schist, the disc is 61 centimeters in diameter and just over 10 centimeters high. While schist bowls are common finds in ancient Egyptian graves, the Sabu disc's unusual shape makes it a remarkable discovery. Its intended use has sparked much debate. Emery initially hypothesized that the presence of a central socket hole indicates the disc may have served as a decorative stand. However, any additional artifacts that could have corroborated this theory were likely stolen by grave robbers centuries ago. Some scholars now speculate it was intended as a ritual lamp, with the bowl holding oil and the socket enabling it to be more easily carried. Others subscribing to the out-of-place artifact theory have suggested it may be a component of an early mechanical flywheel contraption to store rotational energy, or even a flying disc, due to analysis that showed aerodynamic properties. Proponents of ancient astronaut theories have even cited the disc as potentially an alien artifact. However, given the fragility of the schist, the mainstream belief remains that the disc had no practical use and was purely ornamental. Nimrud Lens Nimrud is an ancient Assyrian city in Iraq that has, over the years, revealed many of its fascinating secrets to archaeologists and explorers. Arguably, one of the most important discoveries made at Nimrud occurred in 1850, when Sir Austin Henry Layard, an English archaeologist and politician, found the Nimrud lens. The lens is 38 mm in diameter and 23 mm thick, with a focal length of about 11 cm. Dated to the 8th century BC, the artifact is a ground piece of rock crystal with a vaguely oval shape. Some scholars suggest that the Nimrud lens could be the world's oldest telescopic device, and one Italian professor has claimed it might have been one of several components of an ancient telescope predating the first known telescope by more than 2,000 years. 
while no other lenses or telescopic components have been discovered, this theory could help explain the ancient Assyrians' advanced understanding of astronomy. The exact function of the Nimrud lens is still a subject of speculation. While it could have been used for telescopic purposes, other possibilities include its use as a magnifying glass or for igniting fires by focusing sunlight. In modern terms, its magnification powers are equivalent to a 3x magnifying glass. Supporting the theory of intentional design for practical use, an even older lens-like object is mentioned in the Epic of Gilgamesh, an ancient text written around 2000 BC. This text alludes to a sacred glass used for lighting ceremonial fires, suggesting a long history of optical technology. Despite its potential for practical uses, the British Museum, where the Nimrud lens is kept on display, states, quote, There is no evidence that the Assyrians use lenses, either for magnification or for making fire, and it is much more likely that this is a piece of inlay, perhaps for furniture. This suggests that its optical properties might have been an accidental byproduct, rather than a designed feature. Nanjing Belt The Nanjing Belt is a highly unusual artifact that, due to its composition, appears to challenge previous historical understandings of alloy production. In 1952, during the excavation of a site intended for a middle school sports field in Yixing City, China, a worker's spade broke through the ground into a cavernous tomb, revealing the Nanjing Belt. Archaeologists, upon examination, found the tomb contained a skeleton, presumably of a wealthy individual, buried alongside numerous items, including the belt. Analysis of inscriptions found inside identified the tomb as belonging to Chou Chu, a 3rd century Chinese general celebrated in legend and ancient Chinese mythology. An effective wartime leader and rebel, Chou Chu is said to have been a slayer of tigers and dragons. Ultimately, Chou Chu died in combat while fighting an army of 70,000, backed by his army of only 5,000. When asked why he refused to retreat, he is said to have replied, quote, I am a minister of a nation. Isn't it proper to die for one's country? The belt, found in 17 fragments around the skeleton's waist after the leather components had decayed, was initially identified as primarily composed of copper and silver. Subsequent analyses revealed the belt contained aluminum, a metal thought to have been undiscovered until the early 19th century. This finding prompted some to suggest that the belt might be a hoax, or that modern grave robbers left parts of it behind despite the tomb's untouched condition. It wasn't until 1825, after many failed attempts, that aluminum was finally isolated and refined from the naturally available chemical compound alum. Even then, it was not until over 60 years later that aluminum production was scaled up to qualities suitable for mass industrial use. How ancient Chinese craftsmen created the Nanjing Belt, incorporating aluminum long before its known discovery, remains a mystery. Tamil Bell In 1836, when missionary William Colenso encountered a group of New Zealand Maori women boiling potatoes in what appeared to be a fragment of a bronze bell, he became fascinated by the vessel's composition. At that time, it was believed the Maori people had limited external contacts that could have supplied them with metal cooking pots, and their cooking methods generally involved using heated rocks. The women told Colenso that the bronze artifact had been with them for many years, but none could say how it arrived. Some said it had been discovered among the roots of a tree. Colenso was very intrigued, since bronze was unavailable in New Zealand, so he exchanged a cast iron pot for it. The artifact he acquired, measuring 13 centimeters in length and 9 centimeters in depth, became known as the Tamil Bell, due to inscriptions found on it that matched an ancient form of the Tamil language. Colenso sent copies of the Tamil inscriptions on the bell around the world, attempting to have them translated. Months later, he received a reply revealing the bell's original purpose. The translation read, quote, Bell of the ship of Mohaideen Baksh. The bell likely originated from a Muslim merchant ship, although historical records indicate these ships did not sail further than Indonesia, and no evidence exists of a Tamil colony in New Zealand, leaving its presence there a puzzle. Various explanations have been proposed, including the possibility of the bell drifting from the Indian Ocean on an abandoned ghost ship to the New Zealand coast, being brought and traded by the descendants of maroon Spanish sailors from French Polynesia or carried by a lost Portuguese trading ship. Yet none of these theories have been definitively proven. Before his death, Colenso poignantly wrote, quote, It's believed that this ancient relic may yet prove to be an important witness. Its tale has yet to be told. The mystery of how the Tamil Bell found its way to New Zealand remains unsolved to this day. 
Are you ready to unlock the secrets of the past? Subscribe now to Dark Five's Ancient Mysteries channel and embark on a journey to uncover the most enigmatic and awe-inspiring mysteries of ancient times. Leave a comment if there are any ancient mysteries you want us to explore in upcoming videos.